Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Today saw the finale of the World Blitz Chess Championship. Well, so many twists and turns <laughs> happened uh, today. First of all, just let me remind you, Levon Aronian was leading the field after day one. Uh, but before I mention what happened to him, uh, I should say that the first player to drop out of the running was Hikaru Nakamura, who tested positive for COVID and was forced to withdraw from the tournament. He was in the chasing pack, but you know was pretty well placed. So very unfortunate for him. Of course, we wish him well. I um, hope he recovers well and hope that uh, none of the other participants in the tournament uh, have been affected. Um, so what happened? Well, Levon Aronian looked to be playing a superb tournament, but he lost three in a row. And he, he just lost his, his confidence at some, some moment. Three in a row. It can happen. Um, he eventually finished with 14 out of 21. Uh, Magnus Carlsen seemed to be in with a chance. He lost two in a row at some point. He finished way back, let me see, with 13 and a half. Um, anyway, it ended up in a three-way tie for first place, all on 15 out of 21 between Maxime Vachil Agraf, Jan Krzysztof Duda and Ali Reza Firuz Jart. Now, we had the same situation as in the Rapid World Championship. Basically, only two players would take place in a tiebreak. So, very unfortunate, uh, very unfortunately for Ali Reza Firuz Jart, um, he was third in the tiebreak on Buchholz. So, the playoff was between Vashil Agrav and Duda. Now, there's a lot of preamble here. We will get to look at some chess eventually, folks. Um, this playoff consisted of two blitz games. When I say blitz games, they have three minutes on the clock and two seconds added per move. Um, the first two games were drawn, but then they just played one single game. Now, not an Armageddon game. So if this had been a draw, then I think they would have played a, another game. But basically it was just sudden death at this moment. So first two games were drawn and this was the third blitz game. Let's take a look at what happened. Um, sorry, that was very long winded. We're getting there. So with the white pieces, Maxime Vachilagrave from France against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Uh, from Poland, of course, playing in Warsaw, playing at home. So, well, if he could win, that would be an incredible achievement. His second world title of the year. Remember, he won the World Cup last summer. Uh, 23 years old, playing Maxime, who is, let me see, he's now 31 years old. An old man in chess. Not really. He's in, the, in his prime. So it's a Spanish, uh, not the rookie one main line, but d3 instead of rookie one. And this is a very respectable variation and leads to these very typical sort of anti martial positions, actually, with this pawn structure. a3, that's got to be played to preserve the bishop. So if the knight attacks the bishop, then this important bishop can drop back. Well, of course, I say it's got to be played. You've got to preserve the bishop in some way. You could also play c3, for example. But uh, anyway, a3 or a4 is possible there as well. So castles, knight c3, all pretty normal. In fact, Maxime has played this exact position before. Now, knight b8, what's that about? This is a very common maneuver in the Spanish. So it's, it's like the Brea variation. So the knight will come here. That's a nice set up with the knights on d7 and f6 protecting each other also makes room for the bishop potentially to come here uh, and makes room for the c pawn as well bishop d2 so starts to look at controlling these squares and a4 so 
you know, it's funny how, how the position changes, very slight changes in the position, and now instead of a3, pawn advances to a4, attacking here, this typical Spanish idea, just trying to get a bit of bite here. Now, um, uh, Maxime has had this position twice before against Magnus Carlsen, and Carlsen played rook b8, that's his typical uh, move. He Somehow he doesn't mind giving up the a-file, um, and, well... They, they, they have a win a piece after rook b8. Uh, but anyway, Maxime is familiar with the position. But Duda pushed on. Um, knight d5. So this pawn is attacked. a5 defends. And now c3 breaks things open again. Bishop takes c3. So, well, that, these bishops look pretty nice. Looking at that a pawn. But black is quite solid. Um, knight c5, I mean, one could push this one, but I guess that one could be taken. Anyway, knight c5, it's a blitz game. I shouldn't go into any detail at all, really. But anyway, knight looking good on c5, hits this bishop. So after the exchange, that makes room for the bishop to come to d5. Now, that's a great piece. In fact, I think it would be best if black simply exchanged off that bishop but instead rook a7 which is a little bit awkward queen c2 in fact this was an improvement on their first one of their first blitz games um, and here knight e6 can, would control the d4 square but instead bishop g4 and d4 comes anyway so if bishop takes knight pawn takes knight and now, well, I think it's clear that uh, young Krzysztof Duda with black has gone a bit wrong because this bishop is kind of out on a limb, didn't have the desired effect. This knight threatens to come into c6 with a devastating effect. Uh, this bishop is looking pretty good. I mean, these pieces are quite nice, but still, I think it's these pieces that are very strong and, and just in general. White looks to have a very solid position, you know, nice development. The bishop looks good here. Keeps an eye on that a pawn. So this bishop dropped back. And now an interesting move. Uh, knight b5. So Maxime doesn't mind having his pawns messed up. I mean, there's an argument perhaps for playing rook a6 here, but it, it, it's a little bit unpleasant for black. But instead, this was taken. So, double pawns, but slightly damaged pawn structure. But actually, the most important thing here is that bishop. Let's just go a couple of moves on and talk a bit more about that fantastic bishop. So, nice centralization. Duda has um, kind of stabilized. His queen side, that pawn is protected by the knight, and the knight is protected by the pawn. Queen b8. Now, is that a good move? Not clear. Um, but queen e3 was actually a very, very um, tricky move. Maxime seized tactics so quickly, and in fact, he had a big time advantage on the clock. In fact, his threat here after queen e3, watch, watch that, watch that pin, is to play the pawn to b4. It hardly looks like the move is possible uh, because that could be taken en passant. Uh, but, well, okay, let's just make a random move. Let's, let's take a look. Queen d7 and not played. Then b4, this is the point. If the knight moves, then the rook can be taken, and if pawn takes pawn, again, you exploit the pin. Really nice idea, queen e3, and that starts to destabilize black. Duda played the queen to b8, and the bishop snapped into c6. Now look at that bishop. That dominates black's major pieces. You know, it's, it's, it's like... These pieces just don't have good squares. The rook can't use the open file here. Um, what a piece. Well, you know, I've talked about the octopus knight before. This is, uh, well, 
we've had, we've got various names for this on the channel. Starfish Bishop, the Archbishop. Um, it's a wonderful piece. Now, if you want an illustration of how a, a bishop can be superior to a knight, then, well, this this is a pretty good example, actually. Even though the knight is, has a stable position, but as we'll see, Maxime is able to destabilize like this. And now e5. I mean, it, it's it's hard to suggest improvements, to be honest. It looks like these pieces are just sort of, you know, running up a blind alley here. Um, I, I suspect that um, Duda wanted to do something like knight, knight here, exchange queens, and then maybe maybe bring the knight back to d8 to, to get rid of the bishop, but there's just no time for that. e5. So undermines this knight, basically, and starts to open up the d-file, and this is already looking pretty desperate. I mean, if pawn takes pawn, uh, doesn't look good. Queen takes, oh, you know, th these pieces are just at the wrong end of the board. Anyway, this is the game. So Duda gave up a pawn. And now begins the technical phase. So this is an extra pawn, but still it's, it's blockaded at the moment. And the knight has found another stable square. So first of all, g3, of course. You give the king some room, and then you can activate the second rook. Rook d7, uh, this is important. Of course, it could be that white manages to double rooks on the seventh to attack this pawn. It could be the bishop switches back. Um, rook d7 looking good. Rook b1, well, if, if that one moves back, then you know white has the chance to perhaps push forward. Rook c3 prevents the pawn moving forward because the bishop is attacked, but now rook a1. White's rook takes the place of the black rook, and now this is looking really serious. Knight d8 hits the bishop. Bishop d5. Still, rook a7 could be on the cards. Uh, and of course, rook takes pawn impossible because of rook takes knight. King f8, rook here, doubling on the seventh. Oh, we're in seventh heaven. You just gotta love those rooks. Rook here, Duda hanging on. He was way down on time actually in this game uh, Maxime always had a significant time advantage the only question was could he put it away bishop c4 so now that's protected rooks exchanged and now with with the exchange of rooks really this is starting to get very technical um, you know it it's not complicated but one still needs to put this one away. So obviously that pawn still can't be taken because the knight is on. B7. Just one step away from queening, but the rook blockades. G5. And here, uh, Vachy Le Grave is confident that he can win in a purely technical way and simplifies the position down. Just exchanging off bishop for knight, he's absolutely confident that the rook and pawn endgame is a win and, well, his judgment is correct, of course. The rook is well placed on the seventh, so the king can't step over. Pawn, pawns get taken. And the rook is passive. So now the next phase is to bring the king in. So if black does nothing, then this king will march over. So therefore f5. Okay, so the white king has been shut out so h4 excellent move just undermining the position of the pawn on g5 once that one moves the, the king will be able to come in king d6 attacks the rook rook h7 still protecting the b pawn takes king e5 so duda is still trying to block out the king king e3 and now this position is it's a kind of tzutzfang, actually, because either black has to step back with the king and then the king moves in, or, well, let's just show that. King e6, king f4. 
threatening just to come in here and if king f6 check and now the rook switches across the rook can never move the king can't protect either of these pawns and that is absolutely game over uh, so what did do to do he played rook d8 rook takes h5 now that the rook has moved away from the pawn and so that's pawn number two and here Duda had had enough. There's nothing to do. The, the rook is going to come back. Um, and, and actually black is still in Tugtvang. Um, the king is, is going to enter the position very soon. So that was the final action of the day. Um, with that one golden game, that golden blitz game, uh, Maxime Vachilagrav wins the World Blitz Championship. Um, many congratulations to him. Do you know what? He has a reputation as an excellent blitz player, but he that's the first time he's actually won the World Blitz. So great achievement for him. I'm, I'm del absolutely delighted for him. Um, along the way, he defeated Magnus Carlsen, in fact, in, in the final round of the uh, normal play, bef before the, the playoff, he defeated Carlsen. Um, he also defeated Levon Aronian when, you know, Levon was, looked like he was, you know, romping away with the tournament. So, um, you know, a, a thoroughly deserved victory for Maxime Vachilagraf, but an incredibly tight tournament. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget, let me know what you think about the tiebreak situation. Uh, let me know what you think about the game. Um, and anyway, there'll be more content coming soon on the Power Playtest channel. Just before I go, uh, I want to wish everyone a very, very happy new year. Um, best wishes for 2022. And there's going to be more from the Power Play Chess channel coming soon. Thanks for watching.